G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series and welcome to another episode in servicing your 4x4. Today what we're going to look at is once again the Land Rover Parenti and many of these vehicles are coming out onto the civilian market now and for quite a few of you out there this is probably the first four-wheel drive that you've ever purchased and probably the first Land Rover that you've ever purchased too. So the idea of these videos is obviously just to go through things very simply, very basic and just to build up a bit of confidence in yourself so you feel that you can actually get under the vehicle and have a go yourself. Now I'm about to head out bush for about a week or so so I'm just going to show you today what I actually check before I go on a big trip and I'll be sharing you some tips and tricks to help keep your vehicle in tip top condition. So if this sounds like a video that will be of interest to you, then you know what to do. Stay tuned. Rightio, so the first thing I like to do is obviously check your wheels. Now, if you jack up the front axle and the rear axle, obviously making sure that you're chocking the tyres that actually have contact with the ground, you can actually get a hand and put it on the top here and underneath. And by just very carefully rocking the wheel backwards and forwards, you can actually feel if there's any excessive play in the wheel bearings in here. And this is something that I'm not going to do today, um, I'll demonstrate it to you in future videos because I've actually replaced all the wheel bearings in the Parenti. Now the reason why you check this particularly before a long trip is because over time the wheel bearings which are actually tapered wheel bearings slowly wear and this means that the preload actually changes that's actually exerted on the bearings themselves and what's the preload? Well, the preload is basically the force that's causing the wheel bearings to actually be pushed in to the cone or the racer that they actually run on. Now, over time, there's actually two locking nuts inside the hub here. They can come a little bit loose. It's happened to myself and also with the wear of the wheel bearings. And that'll just cause a bit of an excessive slop and can also cause premature wearing to the actual wheel bearings themselves. So it's important to do that. While you're doing that too, it's always good to check that your wheel nuts are nice and tight. Now this is where a lot of people, I think, get it a bit wrong. If you get a massive piece of, I guess, steel pipe and you put it over the end of your ratchet or whatever you're using and you put every bit of force that you've got in your body to actually tighten that nut up what you'll actually do is actually stretch the wheel stud and that'll actually cause fractures to occur within the steel and after a while that actual stud will either shear off or being a Land Rover particularly on a series Land Rover it'll actually undo because the nut will get stuck onto the actual thread and then the thread that's actually on the thread itself going into the actual wheel stud will cause it to come out. It's all a bit complicated, but once you have it actually happen to you, you will understand. So I do these up to 110 Newton meters. Um, I think in the workshop manual, it's 108 Newton meters, but uh, 10 just works out a little bit easier. And I figure, you know, if we're only going uh, two, two Newton meters more, it's not, uh, it's not that much. So I'll just get my torque wrench to the right setting, which I have. And as you know, I don't use much digital stuff. It's all analog here. And you just go around until, you don't have to put much force on it. You just want it so you can hear that click. Because I'm not actually doing up the nuts, so I can actually go around one, two, three, four, five. Now, 
particularly with the Land Rovers, you need to check your wheel nuts on a regular basis because they are a steel rim. And steel rims do tend to flex a little bit. And with this, it actually causes the wheel nuts to slightly come loose over time. That's what I've found from my experience anyway. So obviously do that on all four wheels and then we'll move underneath and we'll check all the fluid levels in the drivetrain. Rightio, underneath the parenti. So we'll start at the front as I said. So we've got the front axle assembly here. So obviously the first obvious thing that you want to look for is is there enough oil in your front differential? Now this sounds like something you shouldn't have to check that regularly but it's surprising how easily you can get caught out so it uses a half inch socket attachment and a good example of why it's good to check it is this uh, incident incident I guess uh, oh lucky episode happened to a friend of mine and he actually had hit a large rock and it actually caused his diff housing to uh, get dinted or knocked in he then got it repaired and sadly the repair shop uh, forgot to fill up his front diff with oil so 1200 kilometers later uh, on a very hot evening just before Christmas a few years ago um, the diff seized and snapped his axle and it took I think both of us a good week or so to actually get another diff, put it in, pull his whole front axle assembly apart and get his vehicle up and going again so you know it pays to be on the side of caution so anyway let's see if we've got any oil in there, there should be Make sure the oil pan's in the right spot. There we are. Yep, there's oil in there. Now, another thing to look out for is, unlike your series Land Rovers, the Parenti here actually uses molybdenum CV grease in its swivel hub housings and basically there's a tiny little seal that sits on the axle now that can actually obviously degrade over time and the CV grease can then actually make its way into the oil inside the axle case housing and this actually then obviously makes your oil turn into a grey colour now molybdenum grease is not like your typical bearing grease it actually has small parts of molybdenum in it which is a form of metal so Yes, it's probably not the worst thing in the world, but it means it's slightly abrasive. So, you know, over many, many moons and many, many years, this could cause premature wearing to your, um, what do you call it, crown wheel and pinion and diff components, I guess. So, well worth just making note of that when you're actually checking your oil in your front diff. Now, to drain it, it's very simple too and obviously I'm not going to do it in this video because I've just changed the oil not that long ago. Set that up. Yeah. So you just do it up till it's, so it's firm. But there's obviously there's a bung underneath here off to the side. And you just simply take that out and drain it into an oil pan. Uh, I believe it holds around about two and a half litres of uh, SAE 90 or you can use 7590 if you're in a cooler climate hotter climate I would recommend using a 8090 just slightly thicker viscosity using a thinner viscosity oil um, that obviously tends to degrade and break down in extreme heat situations so if you're out here in Western Australia where it can get up to 50 degrees centigrade over summer you need a much thicker oil if you're in a cool temperate climate like let's say Victoria or Tasmania, Canada, I don't know, UK or somewhere like that, then you obviously want to use a thinner oil like a 7590. 
so that's a little top tip there. While you're under here too, it's well worth having a look at your um, ball joints, obviously, are always a good one to check out too. Every six months or 12 months, depending on how much driving I've been doing, I'll go around and I'll just give them a couple pumps of grease. But uh, today, oh, there's a bit of oil there. But uh, other than that, everything seems A-OK. -okay. So we'll move uh, further back down the vehicle and we'll have a look at the gearbox which is actually really quite interesting and I'll show you where you need to actually fill it up where to drain it and obviously some tips and tricks too in regards to that rightio so unlike your Jeep and Toyota Land Cruiser Land Rovers or the Land Rover Defenders and Series and the Parentian County have a transmission brake which is this here. Now this transmission brake or transmission handbrake is controlled by a wire steel cable wire that goes through to your handbrake so we've got that there. Rear prop shaft here we've got the transfer case here which for those of you who don't know transfers the power from the gearbox obviously to the front and the rear wheels. In front of that we've then got the gearbox and in front of that we've then got the bell housing where the clutch is actually uh, in, I guess housed in. Now this gearbox and transfer case uses the same viscosity oil it uses a 20W. Now 20W is a light machining oil and it works very well if you use 2050. Now I recommend using 2050 for petrol engines rather than diesel. Diesel oil has a greater amount of detergent so therefore it can be I've heard a little bit corrosive or a little bit too aggressive. Now people have made the mistake and I've made the mistake of putting SAE 90 in this when I first bought it. Now if you do that don't worry it's not good for it but don't worry. What you'll find is it's virtually impossible to change gear when it's cold. So it becomes very very difficult. <coughs> so to fix that issue what you need to do is drain it and I recommend putting a slightly thinner oil in like a 1540 and that just sort of cleans it up a bit gets rid of all the gunk and you'll probably need to do that I would do it after probably a couple thousand kilometers change it do it again and then move up to a 2050 and just have to change it routinely because it will take time for that SAE 90 to slowly get out even if you drain it all there's still going to be a bit of a residue there now the reason why you can't use SAE 90 is due to a lot of seals within here um, it'll actually degrade them that's what I've read anyway now the Paranti gearbox is different to the typical LT95 gearbox which is used in or was used in the Range Rover from 1970 to I guess the late 19, mid to late 1980s. The only significant difference is actually the preload on the main shaft is given by actually using, instead of, um, it uses tapered roller bearings. Whereas the typical LT95 gearbox uses a straight press fit bearing. So it actually makes it a much stronger um, gearbox and uh, overall transmission. Obviously the ratio for low range is much lower than the typical Land Rover County and obviously the uh, Range Rover too. So that's just some fun facts there for you. But anyway let's let's have a look at it and actually see what we've got inside it. It's weeping a little bit. <coughs> Now, if this is your first Land Rover that you've bought, there's a few tips and terms that you need to um, 
need to come come to terms with. Um, there's leaks, and a leak is more than thirty more than one drop every thirty seconds. A weep is anything less than that. Weeps are okay, leaks aren't. So that's that's something that you need to um, get your head around. The other thing is too is they they do weep and they mark their territory in doing so. Um, the other thing is too, you can spend a lot of money buying a HEMA map app for your phone or your tablet. If you buy a Land Rover it does it all for you because it simply leaves a trail of oil behind it. The other thing is too, is because they weep a bit of oil and they do obviously extinguish a bit too, um, it means you get this lovely coating of oil and dirt underneath the vehicle which I try and clean off routinely but uh, it actually helps to preserve it and uh, a lot of Land Rovers out there would be pretty much on the scrap heap if it wasn't for the fact that they leaked a significant amount of oil and oppo um, not opposed um, were a slight environmental hazard that's what I wanted to say Anyway, so we've got this little bung here, and this uses a half inch, but I'm using a large shifter here, because um, the reason I'm doing this is the shifter works much better when it comes to actually checking the fluid level in the um, gearbox, because you just need a bit of extra leverage. So anyway, let's take this off. This bung's pretty much exactly the same as what you get on a series Land Rover. Make sure the oil pan's in the right spot. Uh -huh. Now, nothing's coming out of it. So we want to see if there's anything in there. That's where your little finger comes in handy. So you can just poke it in. Yep, so there is oil in there. And we also want to check and see the quality of it. Now it's a nice sort of golden syrup honey colour. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So, yep, you can see it's just coming out now. And obviously, just to point out the obvious, make sure when you're checking all these levels that you've got your vehicle on level ground. Um, otherwise it's a waste of time. Anyway we'll move around to the side and we'll have a look at the gearbox. Rightio, so bit of a difficult angle but just to give you a bit of, bit of an idea of what we're looking at uh, this side here is the passenger side of the vehicle. So transfer case back here, front of the car there now up here we've got a large, try and get hand in the right place, we've got a large brass, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, bolt head or nut, you could go either way. And basically it's halfway up the side of the gearbox, and basically, if you think about it, any of your differentials, pretty much anything that's filled up with oil is always halfway. So. We want to take this off, and once again, we want to see is there any oil coming out, or do we need to put any oil in. Now, it's a rather difficult place to get in. You could get a um, like a pry bar in there, or sorry, a breaker bar. But I find if I use a shifter, it means I don't have to get up as much from underneath the car. It's not such an issue if you've got a, a fancy two or four post hoist or if you're fortunate enough to have made a pit. So we obviously want to pull towards the back of the car, like so. It shouldn't be done up tight. I should have mentioned that on the bung or the transfer case. You really don't want to do these up tight. Um, if you strip a thread or anything like that, it will um, just try and get some 
fight in there for you. It will prove to be very problematic. I do apologise with the lighting and the camera angles. It's a bit hard when you're trying to do it all yourself. But anyway, no point whinging. We'll just get on with it. So. There is a copper washer behind this bung, which pays to replace that from time to time. Okay, it's out. And I've missed the oil pan, <laughs> typical. Yeah, so we've got oil coming out of there. It's a nice yellow golden colour. So we'll now tighten up. bung again. Now one thing that you'll always find and it's something that's well worth keeping an eye on is that the gearbox will always have sufficient oil in it. The transfer case gets up to a much higher temperature and there's a seal between the gearbox and the transfer case. Now when that fails or starts to go you'll find that you actually get maybe or half a litre or even more going from the transfer case into the gearbox. Now I've heard cases and I've had cases happen to me in the past not with this gearbox but with other Land Rover gearboxes where the transfer case has pretty much got to a point where it's nearly been completely depleted of oil because of that if it occurs, it is a big job to uh, to replace it. Um, you've basically, you've got to take obviously the gearbox out of the car and then separate the transfer case from the gearbox to replace that seal. So, um, if you've just bought one of these vehicles, probably do as I'm doing now. Check it regularly, and you'll soon find out whether you've got a good gearbox and uh, transfer case. But anyway, that's that's pretty much the transmission side of things. Uh, we'll go to the back diff and we'll have a look at how to check that there. Rightio, so at the back of the vehicle. Now something that will become one of your great mates or friends is one of these. I'd buy these by probably the dozen or half dozen. Just a decreaser and it's really handy. Um, I always hop under with bit of that and a rag and I'll just clean up as I go. Keeps things a bit tidy anyway. But obviously the rear diff is where the white plate is or in this case the off-white plate. We've got a bung here over this side which we need to take off. Once again I'm going to use the, the cheats spanner and use the shifter. Now to drain the diff, there's a bung underneath, directly under here, which sadly I can't get the camera under there to show you. But it basically uses a half inch socket attachment, just like the front diff, and you can just put your ratchet in there or your small extension, and obviously remember the tale of lefty loosey, righty tidy. And lo and behold, the oil will come out. The rear diff uses the same viscosity oil as the front differential, which is a SAE 90, or as I mentioned, you can use 8090 or 7590. One thing I will mention though, make sure you use a GL4 oil, not a GL5 or a fully synthetic oil. Uh, this can actually degrade the seals uh, within the differential. <coughs> differential assembly I should say. Oh, 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 okay. So I've pulled that out and nothing's coming out.
that's okay. So it's you're on a level surface and it's pretty much, I've just put my finger in there just to feel, and it's pretty much sitting right just at the top of the little lip of where the bung goes in. So Yeah, that's fine. just tighten that up so it's just nice and firm and that's it now the other thing that it's good to do when when you're under here is obviously have a look at the wheels on either side or the rims particularly at the bottom if you can see a bit of oil sitting there and your vehicle's been sitting for I don't know about a week or so then that's not good what does it mean well, it means that the stub axle seal, where your wheel bearings are situated in, the stub axle, obviously, um, has failed. And it's leaking. And that's not good, because then that oil is obviously going on to your drum brakes, because the Parenti has drum brakes at the back and disc brakes at the front. So that's something to look out for. Another thing to look out for too, particularly if you're going on corrugated roads, check your shock absorbers, make sure that the bushes are in good order and make sure that obviously they're still attached because <laughs> there are some particular manufacturers out there that do make uh, some very good shock absorbers but they have the tendency of separating, um, particularly after I guess going on hard driving conditions, particularly corrugations and these vehicles do tend to articulate quite a lot the rear so they can be a bit hard on their shock absorbers. The other thing to look out for too is obviously check your brake lines. Uh, if you have purchased one of these vehicles a lot of them have been sitting around for quite a long time so check your rubber flexible brake lines. Now these typically go from the top of the diff here right up to the chassis and you just want to have a look and see are there any little hairline cracks in it and if there are, make sure that you look at getting them replaced. And pretty much, that sums it up. Uh, pretty simple, very simple vehicle, very reliable, very easy to um, maintain. And, you know, as I said earlier in the video, if this is your first Land Rover, what a great choice you've made. And if it's your first four-wheel drive, then you've made an even better choice in my book. But anyway, they're a great vehicle, great, great fun. Um, parts are pretty easy to come by, um, some bits are a bit more difficult than others, but anyway, hopefully this video's sort of shown you what you, you need to do, or what you could do, uh, when you're looking at heading off on your next big trip. Anyway, if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, then pl please do consider supporting us via Patreon, got that out, <laughs> and if that's not your cup of tea, then you can support us via our website through PayPal. And if you're new to the channel and you're just trying to find out who we are, what we do and all the rest, then click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too. And that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, I'm going to get into a bit more of a comfortable position and go and do a bit more tinkering. So I'll catch you in our next video.